have the right to do that. Don't we see this? You can't have the right to do that because it only looks to us like that one's not ready yet. The manuscript is finished. The book is written. Every word has been set in place. And from the moment it appears and begins to be known to our eyes, it is what God intends it to be. From that moment it is a girl. From that moment it is a boy. From that moment it is the child that will run through the woods. From that moment it is the child that will bring tears to its mother's eyes and the boy that will bring anger to his father's heart. <laughs> That's already there. It's already there. And, and if you come along and you try to tell me, no, no, that, that's not to be treated like you or me because that's not finished yet. That doesn't have the right look. The arms aren't developed enough. The spine's not developed enough. The mind, they can't even know this, by the way. How could you know? It's not developed. You can't talk to that little baby. No more. How do you know it's my love? But leave that aside. Mind is not developed enough and all this. What's the matter with people in our world today when they hear people saying that? And here I have to particularly say what is the matter with black folks in America today. When they hear people saying that about the little baby in the womb, and they fail to remember that, uh, I think it would be, I guess, in my case, great grandpa. My great grandpa, there were people who would look at my great-grandfather and say, that one's not ready yet, his skin's the wrong color. That one's not ready yet, the nose is too flat. That one's not ready yet, the lips are too thick. That one's not ready yet, doesn't look like you, doesn't look like me. That one's not white enough. That one doesn't have nice straight hair. That one doesn't look like a human being is supposed to look according to me. And, and so we can kill that one. We can take that one outside and we can lynch that one. We can take that one to the field and we can beat that one to death. We can take that one to the barn and we can break that one and no one has to care because that one isn't ready yet to be treated as a human being. God sees. Okay? God sees. Nobody, nobody sees this similarity. Nobody understands that, that the people who are saying that about the little baby, they're not ready yet, you can kill them are exactly the same people who said once and will say again exactly the same thing about you and me. You understand this? You understand this? Because if you don't understand it, you will walk right back into change. You will walk right back into slavery. You will walk right back into the same oppression that claim the freedom and claim the lives and claim the dignity of your ancestors. And to tell you the truth, there must be an awful lot of black Americans who don't understand this. I got definite proof. I'm not lying. Okay? Because here's the big secret that I know your pastor has shared with you. And I know that Bishop speaks the truth. Guess who is one of these people saying that if they're not ready yet, you get to kill them? If they're not ready yet, you have the right to take their lives. That if they don't look the way somebody says they're supposed to look, you can treat them as if they are not human beings. Who says that? Well, there have been a lot of people who say it. Margaret Sanger said it. Yeah, every, so there are some people who praise her, even though when she said it, she was particularly thinking about black people. She even said so. She was particularly thinking about how we needed to have fewer black people in America. And if only we could encourage their leaders and pastors to get the mothers to kill the babies, then there would be fewer black folks. I, I had a kind of a chilling briefing some time back from a friend of mine who wanted me to understand the power of demographics. Demographics is a word that means how many people are born in each generation, basically. You keep an account of that. I wonder how many black folks in America realize that the way things are going right now, when you get to uh, 2099, you will be able to look around America and take a head count. And you will not find practically nary a person who looks like me. It's true. And who has the heritage and background that Alan Keyes has. Black Americans 
will be no more. Do you realize that? Gone. They'll be gone because of the violence that is claiming lives on our streets, but they'll especially be gone because of the violence that is claiming life in the womb. The sad thing is, we may become the first people in the history of the world. Uh, there's been genocide. There were the Nazis tried it against the Jews. There were the people who tried it in, in, in the Middle East with the slaughter of folks there. There have been times when people have aimed their blows at another people to wipe them out, to extinguish them from the face of the earth. But this may be the very first time when they were able to convince a people to do it to themselves. It's happening. And in addition to the folks who started all of this and who have carried out this little plan and who are every day building their clinics and encouraging the slaughter, why, why there is a fellow I know of, and he looks a little bit like me. He's got a dark skin, and, and he is one of them. He says that it's right to kill the life of the womb because it doesn't look ready yet. That it's okay more than that. He says that once you've decided you want to kill that life in the womb, even if it survives the killing and comes into the world as a fully born baby, you can still kill it because the mother wanted to kill it in the first place. That's the truth. That's what he said. Without doubt. Proven beyond doubt on the record. That's how he believes. He gets into office and the first thing that he does is authorized money to be spent around the world to kill the babies. First thing on his mind, I must make sure that those babies stop. First thing on his mind. And he's not content to do that. He, he wants also to make everybody understand that if they're not ready yet and you can kill them, you can also exploit them for profit. Okay? You can take them and use them for profitable research that will help you to develop new drugs that you can overcharge people for and make billions upon billions of dollars. That was the first thing he did when he gets into office. Make that possible. He's also somebody who believes in slavery. Oh, how dare you say that? He believes in slavery. See, because one of the first things he did, the, the previous president had issued an order that said that if you were somebody like, for instance, a faithful Christian who believes that killing babies in the womb is wrong, abortion is wrong. You cannot be forced to perform an abortion. There was an order that said you can't be forced to perform an abortion. When you force somebody to do labor against their will, what do we call it? Slavery. When you force somebody to do that which is against their conscience, what do we call it? Slavery. And this man gets into office, and what he does is he takes that protection for conscience, and he says, I am taking that away. I rescind that. I wipe that out. I withdraw that. And his intention is to force medical people to perform and participate in abortion against their conscience and against their will. What do you call that? See? The simple truth is we have someone who rejects the principle of equality before God, who rejects the principle of equal rights for every human being created by God. And then he also boldly steps forward to implement the consequences. And once you have rejected them as human beings, you can use them for profit and you can enslave them to do your will. <laughs> and, and somebody's supposed to tell me, they tell me, actually, that I'm a bad person. You know why? They say I'm bad. I've had people tell me I'm bad and I'm a traitor and, and, and all of this. They call me bad names. I was out on the street in front of Notre Dame uh, bearing witness to the truth of God's will for life. And people passing by in cars, calling me an Uncle Tom and telling me that I am a traitor to black people and so forth and so on. You know why? Because I will not put my allegiance to some mythical, fictional, racist concept of who I am before my allegiance to Almighty God. I will not do it.